In this video, I'll be trying to make the perfect B&M Giga Coaster. If you're not familiar, a Giga Coaster is any roller coaster between 300 and 400 feet tall, and out of the seven that exist right now in the world, B&M has made three of them. These are Fury 325 at Carowinds, Orion at Kings Island, and Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. Today, I will attempt to design the perfect roller coaster layout based on these rides. Once again, let's define the perfect roller coaster. It needs to be comfortable, with smooth track and good restraints. It should also be visually appealing, capturing the attention of park goers. On a coaster with a lift hill, the drop is very important and should deliver a gut punch whether with ejector airtime or floater airtime, which we will see in this episode. The ride should have a diverse variety of elements, including multiple airtime moments that are unique from one another in some way, and the ride should have inversions if it's appropriate for that coaster type. The ride should have a consistent pace with well-sequenced elements, minimizing filler track, and its duration should be long enough to be satisfying, but not overly prolonged. Sometimes I find myself putting in an excessive number of coaster elements in the belief that it enhances the coaster's quality. However, this can lead to pacing issues and make certain parts of the ride seem unnecessary. Other times, the coaster's pacing is just way too fast, and I cringe looking back at it. The initial idea for my design drew heavy inspiration from Fury 325, while also incorporating elements from their newer designs such as Orion and Candemonium. I wanted to feature a large L-shaped layout with a low-to-the-ground first half, which is a defining characteristic that sets Fury apart from the other B&M Giga coasters. My concept aims to be a perfected version of Fury 325, which most people already consider to be close to a perfect roller coaster. However, if you want to nitpick, there are some lackluster moments, particularly the extended transition after the turnaround and the slow helix at the end. This is all based on speculation because I haven't ridden it, but every review of this ride points out these moments as being not very thrilling, and you can easily tell by the POV. I assume the intention for the helix is to sap the train of some of its speed heading into the final brakes, which it definitely does, however in terms of thrill, this element doesn't do anything. So even if I need some sort of helix to slow the train down during the ride, I will make that element pop in some way, either with strong g-forces like Goliath at Over Georgia, or with a very unique twist like Candemonium. Additionally, I wanted my design to bring in fresh elements that are not seen on other B&M coasters. This continues a trend shown by Fury's treble clef turnaround, as well as Orion's wave turn and final off-axis hill, all of which were unique elements for B&M coasters at the time. For my concept, I wanted to not feature this treble clef element, since so many of my B&M designs, and No Limits B&M designs in general, feature this element, so I wanted to do something different for the far turnaround. Towards the end of the layout, I wanted to feature small airtime hills that provide strong floater airtime, similar to what is found on Fury and Orion. Now, let's do an overview of the layout that I designed. The first drop is a classic feature of B&M Giga Coasters, serving as a spectacle that draws park goers to the ride. It offers several seconds of free fall accompanied by floater airtime, followed by a pullout that subjects riders to fairly strong positive g-forces. My all-time favorite drop on a coaster is Orion at Kings Island, so I know this element will be great. After the first drop, instead of a large element like on other B&M Gigas, I emphasize speed right away with a slight left turn leading into a small scale S-hill. This element provides riders with airtime and subtle lateral forces as they maneuver close to the ground. The next element is unique on a B&M, and it's kind of how I picture the company would do an outer banked wave turn, such as the one on Iron Gwazi. Of course, this is more drawn out, but the track shaping is quite similar. Think of this as being Orion's first element after the drop, except it's banked outward instead of inward, creating airtime and it's much lower to the ground, allowing the train to maintain its speed much better. Following this, the coaster features low-to-the-ground turns influenced by Fury 325, showcasing the ride's speed with back-and-forth movements. For the turnaround, this layout includes a high-speed helix that delivers sustained positive forces before snapping in the opposite direction. This twist contrasts with the low-to-the-ground twist after the first drop, 
by rotating counterclockwise instead of clockwise, and dropping riders from a height instead of being low to the ground. Next up is the Speed Hill, which is a staple for modern B&M coasters. It offers drawn-out airtime slightly stronger than a typical B&M Camelback Hill, aiming for around negative 0.3 Gs. Speaking of Camelback Hills, that is exactly what's up next. It's obviously another common element on B&M Hyper and Giga Coasters, providing sustained floater airtime for at least 4 seconds. As I alluded to when discussing my initial layout plan, the ride would feature a helix towards the end. Inspired by Candymonium at Hershey Park, this helix has an outward banked transition at the end, but I intentionally did not mirror the exact element that's featured on that ride. Instead, I wanted this element to focus specifically on the airtime, because on Candymonium it focuses more on that unique twist, as airtime's really only present if you sit in a couple of certain seats on the ride. On my design, I decided to only bank this about 55 degrees outward instead of close to 90. This offers more sustained airtime at a unique angle that isn't featured on any B&M coasters, because most of the airtime in their coasters is either at 0 degrees, 90 degrees, or with the banking changing throughout. Having airtime sustained at a banking of 45 to 55 degrees is really only an RMC thing, so this would be completely new for a B&M coaster. Up next is a strong floater airtime hill that begins the final portion of the ride. It is reminiscent of Fury 325's final hills, offering strength similar to the speed hill earlier in the ride. The track banks underneath the first drop and enters an off-axis airtime hill, where I tried to make this as similar to Orion's final hill as I could, albeit mirrored. The track is designed with about negative 0.5 Gs of airtime, with seats in the back row experiencing even stronger forces around negative 7, negative 7, negative 0.7 or negative 0.8 Gs, which is considered legitimate ejector airtime for a modern B&M coaster. At the end of this layout, each element increases in airtime strength, culminating in a powerful ejector moment to conclude the ride. This final airtime moment, the ride's 10th, leads into the final breaks, which of course is really high off the ground. Now, let's evaluate the coaster against the criteria. Is it comfortable? Well, the B&M clamshell restraints are my all-time favorite, their coasters are usually smooth, I mean some of them have a pretty bad rattle including ones that opened this year somehow, but anyway that's not really anything that matters in No Limits, so let's just say, yeah, the ride's comfortable. Is it visually appealing? Well, I'm not sure there is a more visually appealing type of coaster, so yeah, that's visually appealing. Does it have a good drop? Well, considering the drop on Orion is my favorite on any coaster, and this is literally the exact same thing, I'm gonna say yeah, it has a good drop. Does it have good sequencing and variety? Yeah, no two elements are the same on this coaster, and there's airtime of all angles and durations. Even the strength of airtime has some good variety for a B&M coaster. Does it have good pacing? Is it not too slow, not too unrealistically fast? Well, it would be hard to make the pacing too slow on a No Limits design of a B&M Giga, but I think I did a good job of not making it too fast either. Does it have any filler track? Well, every element flows right into the next, and each one delivers some sort of force or airtime. Overall, I think this is the best perfect coaster I've done so far. Way more perfect than the weird first half of the Intamin Blitz and the improvised ending of the RMC that I did on the fly and is kind of weird, but... Anyway, I think it's pretty alright. What do you think? Let's watch the POV.